welcome to Kanpai Planet. I'm Mac. I've lived in Japan for 15 years and I'm about to embark on one of the biggest adventures of my life. I'm going to spend one week making Japanese sake and I'm doing it on one of the most magical islands in the Japanese archipelago, Sado. Join me on this special journey into the heart of Japanese culture. I've just been told that in the real world, today is a Saturday, but Sake never sleeps. Day three begins with more rice steaming and I arrived early enough to see the machinery puffing away outside. This is the impact of that rice steaming. The delicious smell of steamed rice permeating the air outside Gakogura. This is typically the first task of the brewing day steaming rice for either the fermentation starter or for koji production or for the kakemai which is the plain cooled steamed rice that goes directly into the mash tank. Steaming has two purposes. It sterilizes the rice and more importantly it alters the structure of the starch molecules to one that the enzymes from the koji mold can actually break down into sugars. This batch will be the last lot to be kojified and forms part of the rice mix for the last addition to the main tank on day seven. The aim is for the grains to be evenly cooked, to be firm on the outside and soft on the inside, like a tennis ball. A concept elegantly expressed in one Japanese word, gaikonaina, brilliant. We weigh the amount of rice on each tray. About 17 kilograms, this is carefully logged by the Kurabito. Steamy. We really start getting into the groove as a team, taking it in turns to remove the rice from the steamer, then shift straight into cooling. All of us are starting to feel like legit Kurabito. Another few years of this and we'll get there. To cool the rice, I roll it to the middle then break it up to give each grain exposure to air and create a uniform temperature throughout the rice. So now we're in the muro, the koji room, and we've got to spread out this rice very thinly on this table. We spread it evenly, breaking it up as much as possible into small clumps. The sandan jikomi is when all the ingredients are added to the main fermentation tank over the course of four days in three stages, Hatsuzoe, Nakazoe, and Tomezoe. Each day in the muro, we're making a koji batch that corresponds to each stage of the sandanjikomi. So this is the last day we can get our koji groove on. Okay. 
This smooth, firm mound is the optimal shape to heat things up and trap the moisture inside, just the way the corgi mold likes it, and let it get to work converting starch to glucose. Think about how many blankets you need on a freezing winter's day, and now imagine getting bundled up like this. Given it's already very hot and humid in here, this blanket quota is exceeding all my expectations. Snug as a bug in 10 rugs. Sending it to sleep. We take the rest of the steamed rice to the large walk-in refrigerator. The refrigerator, absolutely wonderful feeling to cool down after all that hard work in the mud off. Best place to be on a Saturday summer is in that refrigerator. A day without washing is not a day making sake. We're just using these poles to clean the mesh. Keeping everything clean, very, very important part of the process. Wash it, wash it, wash it, wash it. Everybody wash it. See what I did there? <laughs> what an absolutely incredible view. Making sake on Sado is exceeding my expectations. Not only a great experience learning all about Nihonshu and its production, but also learning about this magical island. Just down the hill and round the corner from Gakogura, our fortunes could change forever, panning for gold at the Sado Nishimikawa Gold Park. It's on the former site of Nishimikawa Gold Dust Mine, said to be one of Sado's oldest. From around 1615 to 1645, the mines on Sado produced around 400 kilograms of gold and 37 tons of silver per year, making the island one of the largest producers of gold and silver in the world. Oh, no. I am prospecting for gold. This sand is taken from the nearby riverbed. And these are real flecks of gold. Yes, I found two pieces of gold that are allegedly somewhere in here. I'm rich. Now to buy my own Saka Brewery. So, it's the afternoon of day three, and we're about to do more rice washing. The level of diligence the Kurabito demonstrate on a daily basis is phenomenal. Even folding down the bags of rice has a tried and true technique for maximum efficiency. Just finished prepping the bags so the rice comes out of them more easily when it goes into the washer. With washing and steaming on a daily basis, it's hard to keep track of what rice is for what purpose. So I asked my main Kurabito man, Tomoyuki. Kakemai refers to the portion of rice that's going to be steamed, cooled, then put straight into the brewing tank. Up till now, we've been washing, steaming and cooling rice just for corgi production. This kakemai we're washing now will be steamed tomorrow morning on day four, when we actually get to start putting our rice into the tank to make a fermentation mash. All the rice is washed in small batches. So just put the first bag of rice in. Now it's being washed. I've got the timer on there, one minute. Very precise. 
This cloudy effluent is from the grains grinding against each other and dislodging powdery bran particles called nuka left over from the polishing process. Rice is almost always polished before it's used in sake making. Polishing removes the outer layers which contain minerals, lipids and proteins that can adversely impact a sake's flavour. The percentage that remains after polishing is referred to as the semi buai, the rice polishing ratio. This percentage is almost always printed on a sake's label, although it's not a legal requirement. We place all the batches of washed rice on blue trays to drain before soaking. The level of physical labour needed to make this drink is ridiculous. Next, just like yesterday, we soak the rice for exactly 12 minutes in tubs of very cold, very clean water until just the right amount is absorbed, equivalent to around 30% of a grain's mass. Soaking can make or break a batch of sake, so it has to be executed perfectly. Each soaked batch is weighed and the kurabiton meticulously record the results. Precision reigns supreme in sake making. We cover our soaked Hatsuzoa kakemai rice with plastic to keep it moist and leave it to drain overnight before steaming early tomorrow morning. Now we come to an exciting and crucial part of our sake making journey. It's something very dear to me, the mother of sake. I'm talking about the shubo, the fermentation or yeast starter, which is the first ingredient of our mash that's already been two weeks in the making in this mini tank, which is about 10 times smaller than the main fermentation tank. The kanji characters literally mean mother of sake. It's an impressive moment watching our shubo get poured into the main S2 tank as it forms the whole foundation to create our fermentation mash. So what do I mean by a fermentation starter? This shubo, aka motto, creates an acidic environment in which yeast can thrive, but is also inhospitable to undesirable wild bacteria and other microbes. There are three main ways to make the motto. Sokojo motto, kimoto, and yamahai motto. Ours is sokojo motto, the most widely used method. It means quick fermentation base and takes around 14 days. Yes, that's quick. The ingredients are water, koji, steamed rice, lactic acid and yeast. The proportion of koji is relatively high for faster starch to sugar conversion, providing food for yeast growth. The Kimoto and Yamahai Moto methods take up to a month because they use lactobacillus already existing in the koji or brewery environment to naturally create the required acidity. This is the bit that was scraped out. It's incredible, no waste. So this is the shubo. What a rare treat and something you'll only get to do with boots on the ground in a sake brewery like Gakogura. Very sharp taste, uh, very acrid, uh, still needs a lot more smoothing out. I mean, it's nice, but I can understand why there's a lot more to the sake brewing process coming up. How is it? What is it? Mada, mada, mada. <laughs> I'm loving my time here. Lots of fun. We're back in the muro to do kirikayashi, mixing and turning over the tomokoji mound we created this morning. The koji mold has started to grow across the rice, but with some uneven patches. Re-breaking up helps ensure that mold growth happens evenly throughout. 
We're gonna be using this corgi on day seven for the final step in building our fermentation mash. Your corgi highness, should there be anything further you require, ring the bell. So that's a wrap on day three. Very similar in structure to day one with the addition, pun intended, of the addition of the shubo to the main tank. That evening, off the coast of the incredible wooden village of Shukunegi, I enjoy a calming night cruise by firelight in a hangiri, Sado's famous bathtub boat. As the ocean reflects the flames, I too reflect on the things I'm learning, the friends I'm making, and the experiences to come at Gakogura. That's a wrap on day three. Gotta say, tasting the shubo was a real highlight. Coming up on day four, beginning our sandanjikomi with the Hatsuzoe and taking in the view from the top of tanks and terrace mountains. Join us making sake on Sado.